Hey guys, and welcome back to another Unfiltered Gamer board game review, or in this case, a dice game review for the game Dice Masters and the subset Secret Wars, because there are a lot of Dice Masters uh, types of sets. Uh, this is a dice building slash TD. G, like a trading dice game in which you're going to be selecting a certain number of characters and their dice, selecting a certain number of these action cards called basic actions, and also having a certain number of these standard dice. You're going to be utilizing your standard dice, putting them in a bag, rolling a certain number of them, utilizing the energy that, that, that they provide to then gain new dice. Those new dice will go in the bag and you'll be actually taking out those dice eventually, putting them into here, and then rolling those guys. Those guys will represent different characters in the different universes, and this one specifically the Marvel Universe, the Marvel Secret Wars Universe, and you will try and utilize the dice, attack your opponents, much like similar card games like uh, Magic the Gathering, for instance, as far as combat, to eliminate your opponent. Each of you start with 20 HP, and when you can remove the HP from your opponent down to zero, you'll win the game. There's a bunch of different setups. You can gather different draft packs, play with the original origin pack alone, or make a combination with multiple draft packs to create your best team of eight unique fighters in the world of Dice Masters. We'll talk about this two-player game. It takes roughly about 25 to 45 minutes to play, I'd say, and it's for ages 13 and up. Are you ready for Dice Masters? I'll get into the setup of the game the basic idea of construction, and then of course we'll talk about how to play, and finally our review. So just before we get into the setup of the game, which is what I normally do, I want to talk about Dice Masters as a whole and how it kind of functions and what your choices are, your options are when it comes to gathering certain packs. The first thing you need to know is that if you buy an origin pack, which is the first thing you need to buy in this game, because it's going to come with these support dice, these dice here that are going to give you the basic types of energy for all the characters in the game, as well as these little pawn tokens on the dice, which are going to be like your sidekicks. It's also going to be able to give you the these action dice, and you'll be getting two of them, blue and yellow, or black and pink. They might be different depending on the different sets. These are the base dice you will need to begin the game, period. So buying just a draft pack will not get you there. You have to have a origin pack for the dice that you need. But once you get one of these, you won't need another one, but you can if you want to. Additionally, you'll have to get somebody else that has an origin pack as well. So if I wanted to play this game, I'd need this origin pack and another origin pack. And luckily in this set, they're going to have the Dice Masters, I believe this is Spider Gwen, and this one over here is Groot. But they come with different characters inside the boxes. Once you have your origin pack, you can just simply play with Dice Masters as is. Whatever they have in there, you can use. Now, there's going to be less characters and less choices as far as the different basic types of actions. There'll be less dice because you're just kind of learning the game. So to fully experience a game of Dice Masters, which is like a thing you need to understand before you even begin setting up, is if you really want the full experience, at least where you have enough cards to play with the game, you'll need to pick up one of these Dice Master draft packs. It can be from any series or any set, it doesn't have to be from Secret Wars, this just happens to be the newest set and the one I'm going to be reviewing. Um, but if you wanted to, you could pick up an origin pack and a draft pack. That will give you the whole needed um, ability to play this game. And the same will be said for your opponent. And your opponent couldn't just use their origin pack while you use the draft pack and an origin pack. It needs to be equal because there's a certain number of characters that get fielded based on what you have available to you. If you want, you can also gather a ton of draft packs from a ton of the different worlds and universes that this game has. Yu-Gi-Oh! and I don't know what other ones there are, there's quite a few of them though. And you can mix and match your characters. You can add the same dice, sometimes dice will come in a pack that has a different amount, etc, etc. But I'll explain a lot of that in my review portion. But just all you need to know is, to actually play this game, get an origin pack, and get a draft pack. It's going to cost you about 30 bucks, and you're ready to go, as long as you got an opponent that also did the same. So, let's talk about the setup for the game. First of all, the draft pack, or origin pack I should say, comes with this little handy dandy sheet here. It's not necessarily needed, but it is very useful. And I would actually suggest that if you have a mat or a way of getting a mat, it would be even better because it's a lot larger. Place that in the center of the table. Then, take all your support dice, your main eight dice that you get in the origin pack, and set it somewhere next to the prep area. You're then going to be getting three dice for each of your specific basic actions. And you'll place your basic action color cards next to your game mat. These are going to be of different colors based on your dice, and they'll allow you to place cards on top of them that represent the different cards that are going to go with your dice for the game that you're playing. Then, 
After that, you're basically going to be opening up your draft packs and your origin pack and finding the characters that you want and the actions that you want. You can choose two basic actions for your side of the field. These basic actions are going to be available to you when you get their dice. And some of them have a global ability that will allow players to utilize their energy, even when it's not their turn, uh, to do their effects. Make sure that you set your dice next to the specific actions because each die only focuses on the specific card on that card that is that color. Uh, you're gonna go ahead and take these dice here, the support ones, and you can put them in a bag. It doesn't come with a bag, so I would suggest getting one as long as you can't see through it. Pick eight characters. The only rule with characters is that you cannot have the same type of character uh, more than once. And even though they might have a subtext, like for instance, I might have the Groot, Bark, and Fight, I would not be able to select a secondary Groot, even if it had a second subtext. So you're not going to be able to gather more than one of each character. Um, the other rule is each of the characters comes with a certain allotment of dice in the draft pack. And each of the cards of the characters tells you the max amount of dice that you can use in the game. So a Groot might come with a max of four dice, so you can only use four Groot dice when playing the game. Set each of your eight characters up, whatever combination you want to make, and all the dice that you have for them up to their max. Then any extra cards, like these guys here from the draft pack that you don't choose to use, or if you choose not to use the origin pack ones, you can go ahead and set these guys aside. You will not need them for this game. This is all you need. If you're also gonna have additional dice from the draft pack, you can go ahead and move those aside as well. Those go with the other characters that are not associated with the characters that you currently have. And after you've got that, basically what you're going to be left with is a bag of your base dice, your six different action dice, and all your characters behind your play mat that have all their dice associated with them. After that, your opponent will do the same thing, as you can see, and you're ready to begin the game, which I'll talk about now. So when it comes to playing Secret Wars, the Dice Masters, Dice Masters all play basically the same. There are different stylizations of the cards, and I believe this new set doesn't show you all the different sides, just the sides that involve the characters, um, which I'll kind of explain later if that doesn't make any sense, but uh, just know that some cards from previous seasons do not look the same, but they all function the same and they can be used interchangeably. All right, so how to play the game? Well. On the first turn, there is a unique little thing that I want to talk about. In general, you'll take out four dice from your bag, and you are going to be rolling these dice along with any dice in your prep area. But on the first turn, you're going to take one die and put it in your use pile before you roll your dice, which means you're only gonna get three as opposed to four. Just like in Magic the Gathering, when it's your first turn, you don't get to draw a card wherever other people will get to. It's kind of like a handicap because you get to start first and you can actually do some cool stuff on your first turn. But otherwise, I'll go ahead and introduce you to the first game and the first turn of play. And that will tell you everything you need to know about Dice Masters. Take your bag and pull out four dice. Then you're going to go ahead and roll these dice. You'll also take any die from your prep area as well, if there were any here, and place them in your hand as well and roll those. After you roll, you have an opportunity, if you would like, to re-roll any dice. Only one time, so it's kind of like Yahtzee, but instead of multiple re-rolls, you get one. After that, you're going to put all your dice in your reserve pool. And from there, you can then go ahead and choose to purchase any characters or field any characters that you would like, as well as purchase actions. So there are two main symbols on all your dice. One is energy, and there are different types of energy, and the other is a sidekick. Sidekicks are generally free, and you can use them and field them for free by putting them in the above space, which is your field zone. The other thing you can do is purchase. So if I had energy, I'll just go ahead and flip over that to an energy side, I can spend any energy to buy either of my actions, and the cost for all actions and characters are on the top right-hand side. The cost for any character dice that you might be rolling eventually is gonna be on the upper left-hand side. The cost for locked in combat is three, so if I paid three energy, whenever you pay, you put it into your use pile. You can also take a die of the type that you chose and put it in your use pile as well. And that's said for your yellow and, and or blue energy that you'd like to buy. And you can buy as many things as you would like. You can take as many of these actions as you possibly can based on what you have allotted to you. So the same is said for these guys, as well as dice, uh, as well as uh, character cards. Now, 
The other thing about character cards is each of them has a unique type that is up in the upper top right hand side of their card and next to their cost. So for instance, Goddess of Thunder, uh, Stormborn, she requires four energy, but that she also has this little mask above. Well, that is basically a type of energy. And when you roll your dice, if you do not have any of those, you cannot purchase her. You have to at least have one and spend that energy with the other energy up to the total cost uh, in order to get her. So in this case here, I have this four energy cost thing. I've got four energy and sadly, no of the blindfolds, no of the little masks. But I do have this question mark and a question mark is a wild energy. And with this, I can use it to make it as though it was the mask. So I could spend all four of these dice to gather a goddess of thunder and I can put this into my discard or I should say my used pile. This is actually gonna come back later, just like any deck builder would, allowing me to roll her now with the dice that I originally started with. The other thing I can do is, of course, when I get this die, fielding a character, I will, when I roll this, uh, if I roll on the character side, which is allocated on the card here, I can spend the cost in the topper, topper upland left side of the, uh, of the die in order to go ahead and field it. So in this case, it would cost me one, and I can use any energy to do this, and I would put my character in the field zone. And these characters have an attack and defense. The top right is the attack, and the bottom right is the defense. Just like in other type of games, uh, you're going to be doing the attack to defense and the uh, attack to defense from your opponent, and you, that's ways characters will be KO'd, which I'll explain. But all you need to know for this phase is you'll spend energy to buy basic actions, to buy the, the action dice for your characters, and of course, if you have a character that you've already pre-rolled, you can spend your uh, mana, or I should say energy, in order to place these characters out and field them. That's the way you're gonna be moving characters out. So just purchasing them alone doesn't actually get you the character. You have to wait until you're able to roll it from your bag and then spend the mana or energy to release it into the world, into your field zone. After you have utilized whatever your energy is that you spent, it'll go to your used pile along with the dice. If you choose to not spend, you'll actually leave whatever is left over in your reserve pile. After all everything has been spent that you want to spend, all the character dice that you could, could buy go here, or your combat or basic action dice, that, uh, they're going to go over here, then you're just left with going through the attack. So if I had a character out on my field zone, I could choose to attack with it. When you attack with a character, there's an interesting that happens. You'll push it up into the attack zone. So I'm declaring attacks. And now my opponent can choose to block. And there's three different things that can happen here. If I attack you and it's unblocked, you will take the damage. You have 20 health. So if this is a 3-2, three, 3 attack, 2 defense, you will lose 3 health. 20, 19, 18, 17. My character, being unblocked, will move into the use zone that will eventually come back into my bag and I'll eventually get to roll again and bring it out. If you choose to block, then there's a few things that can happen. I have a 3-2, and if you block with a 3-2, your 3 will go to my 2, and my 3 will go to your 2. If a character's defense is broken and it hits 0, that character is KO'd. If a character's defense is hit and not broken, meaning let's say I have a 3-3 and you have a 2-3, my 3 hits your 2 and you are KO'd, and your two hits my three, I am not KO'd. Any characters that block and do not pass away, do not get KO'd, will move back to the field. And any characters that do get KO'd will actually move into the prep area for your next turn, meaning instead of just four dice that you're rolling from the bag, you're also gonna get the character that just got KO'd, and you'll be able to roll that as well. And those are the three different ways it can happen. Unblocked is you take the damage and the character moves over here. Blocked is the character comes back to the field in preparation for next round or to be used as a blocker. And finally, KO'd, it goes to your prep area, which you can then use on the next turn. And then after that has been done, you've done your whole combat phase, you're pretty much done with your turn and it'll pass to the next player. And the next player will do their thing. So let's just say that they did their thing. Um, let's say that I, instead of doing anything other than just buying this die here I passed, then I will pull from this bag here. Now, if I, let's say I had no dice left in this bag, what's gonna happen is when there's no dice left in this bag or not enough to equal four, I, I will take all the dice from my use pile and put it back into here. And then now I have all the dice that I previously purchased from the previous rounds and I can then pull from them. And that's how I get my character dice out. 
and I'll choose to pull these out and I will roll them and continue with turns. And that's basically the idea of the game. It's pretty simple. You draw your dice and gather your prep dice, then you roll, then you purchase things, then you put anything you purchased in your use pile as well as anything that you've spent, and then you're gonna go ahead and choose to field things, you'll choose to attack with those things, and then based on what happens, they'll move to a certain area and your turn will end. The only thing that you need to note to remember is that if you choose to not utilize uh, some energy, because you maybe want to use it for your opponent's turn, when the next, tur the next turn comes around on your turn, any unused energy that's in your reserve pool, that's gonna move over to your used pile. So you can't save it for the next turn. The only things that you save are the ones in your prep area and the four you get in your bag. That's pretty much how the game works. I wanna discuss in my review how the different characters can kind of function and the different, all the different unique little combinations you can have for this game, but just as a basic understanding of what a Dice Masters is, that I think that's pretty good. So just like a lot of games that are like deck builders or dice builders, that kind of a thing, uh, Dice Masters is gonna start off slower and progressively become more and more of something that involves you rolling extra dice, fielding extra characters, having unique abilities. And so your first turns will feel like you're rolling the same type of dice and just trying to gather to create your kind of best ultimate team combination. And that all starts with the before you even set up phase. <laughs> the phase of pre-setup, where you are selecting the cards that best work in tandem with other cards. Uh, if you have a very strong team that works with synergy with each other, you are going to have a higher likelihood of winning this game. And there are cards that do a bunch of different things. And based on whether the card is active, meaning that the die that you have of that card is in your field, or when it is fielded, there is gonna be abilities that trigger. And there are other, of course, abilities that other characters have. But I wanna give you a few examples of how you can make a really powerful deck. With Jane, Jane Foster here, uh, Doctor, this is the subtype, she is going to give you two life when you field her, which means when you roll her and then you spend the mana, or the, I call it mana because I'm very magic, I play a lot of magic, but it's called energy. When you spend the energy to move her into the field zone, you're gonna gain two life. And you'll also gain two extra life for each other active character, characters in your field, that have an affiliation. And some characters have an affiliation on the bottom right-hand side. There's little circles that have little indications. This character here is uh, from Thor or Guardians of the Galaxy, or maybe it's an Avenger, et cetera, et cetera. So if you have a multitude of these different affiliations, you'll gain extra life. And having extra life in this game is very, very valuable, especially when you have an idea or purchase to lose a lot of life at the very beginning of the game. Uh, you can also have characters that will be able to do damage. Uh, sometimes it'll be a character like Thor, for instance, that says whenever he's active during your opponent's attack step, he will do two damage in any way that I choose based on how many affiliations my opponent has in their field zone. So there is a wide variety of ways that you can kind of mock up based on what you think your opponents might have and based on what type of team you want to run. I want to run a large affiliation for characters with the uh, the Thor or the, the hammer type, so that way I can score a lot of points here. Uh, if I want to run this guy here, he also has that affiliation, and if you have affiliations, I can do damage to you. There are other more basic type of actions too, which are pretty cool, like for instance, Groot, whenever you field him, whenever you roll him and pay for him to put him out onto the field, you can select a character die on your opponent's side of the field that can't block. So maybe they have a really big blocker, but they only have one life. You can play Groot out, and now you can swing in because that character can no longer block. So there's a wide variety of character abilities. Sometimes the characters will give a bonus to attack or defense for a specific turn. Others will allow you to re-roll dice. Some of them are going to allow you to, instead of having a character get KO'd, re-roll that character and bring it back onto your field. And it just goes on from there. There's passive abilities, there's active abilities, there's abilities in combination with each other, characters that work really well together. Some characters are very strong with very little ability, and some characters are very weak with high ability. And it's also based on not only the rarity of the card, because this has a form of a trading card game appeal to it, where the cards have a certain variety of common, uncommon, rare, and super rare, or secret rare. Uh, the character dice have a certain value on them, and no matter what the card you have, the dice will be the same. So for instance, I have a Franklin's Galactus, and it's a character that uh, has a bunch of large stats on their dice. But in this case, for the common version, uh, it has no stats. Basically, the best you can get is a three cost 10-10, which is huge in the game. It's probably the biggest thing I have seen. 
But if you were to have the uncommon or rare maybe, or even super rare, it would probably have an ability on it that might be a little bit better. So obviously the more packs you get, uh, to find the cards you want or buying singles online will probably give you a better purchase to getting the type of teams that you want. Um, you have Spider-Man. Some of, some of those guys can double block characters because in general there is a rule of when you block it has to be one to one. So you attack with Thor, I block with Spider-Man. But I can have, of course, multiple blocks on one character. So I can have all three of my dudes block one of your dude, but what I can't do is have my Spider-Man block maybe your Thor and your Groot and your Star-Lord, unless the character says so. And in this case, Spider-Man allows you to block an additional character die. So you can block two characters with that specific character, which is really nice. And each of them present unique bonuses and powers and unique setup. And then uh, action cards as well. Actions have unique little aspects to them for perhaps locked in combat, allowing yourself to get these, com these action dice. You're not gonna ever get a character from them. And most of the time you're going to get either energy, which is basically a, uh, a neutral type of energy. So you can get two of that. Or there are little symbols that are going to refer to specific types of actions. Uh, and you'll do a specific thing whenever you roll that and choose to keep it. So in one case, I could target a character uh, die for each, from each player's field zone and set them aside until end of turn. And then when they return, you do deal each two damage. So you can have a ways to defeat little characters, or maybe it's a global that says, as long as you've got this, uh, the lightning energy, you can spend that either on my turn or on your turn to increase the combat value of a specific character that you want to defeat another character. So there's ways around dealing with those bigger characters that you normally cannot deal with. And the fact that you have different basic actions that are kind of your own, but if they have globals or your characters have globals, other people can use them is a nice little twist on how you can create your deck. And I think that's pretty much all you need to know about this game. Like, if you want to have the best possible team, you would probably want to buy singles or a large variety of these Dice Master draft boxes. There is a wide variety of rarities in, in the sense that some are going to be foil, whether they are a super rare or secret rare. I'm not sure what the, what, what the type of rarity it is, but it has a little S in the top of the bottom left-hand corner. And if it's a foil, it's going to be a little bit more difficult to get. Um, and then, of course, you might have something like a common that's just a common or a common that's a foil that's a little bit more nicer than a regular one. And because you're not going to actually want to run most of the time all the secret rares, you might think you do, but there are actually characters that are very small and get you can get on the field quicker and they provide you with more energy. So you're going to probably want to run a, a mixed array of different characters in the game. All right, my thoughts on the game now. The artwork in this game is amazing. Uh, I think from all the Dice Masters I have played, all the Dice Masters games are excellent in artwork, excellent in theme, the ability to combine different characters from different universes and put them together to kind of work together in a type of unique synergistic way is excellent. This game reminds me heavily of Magic the Gathering. I imagine that the people who made this game did have a strong understanding of magic, but wanted to make it different in the fact that you're using dice. And with dice comes luck. That being said, there is a lot of mitigation in this game. When you roll, you have the opportunity to re-roll. You can choose character cards that will allow you to additionally re-roll, combat cards, basic action cards that will allow you to re-roll as well to kind of create the best possible field you can. But at the end of the day, there's going to be additionally more luck, I would say, uh, in this specific version. But what's nice is you're very, very likely to start off strong. The, the one thing it doesn't have, like magic can kind of have in the luck division is with no lands or, or, or um, no, no ability to play cards because you just drew poorly, uh, you can have a really bad game in magic. Uh, with this one here though, you're always guaranteed to get something if you made your, your, your character selection is as best as you possibly could. If you if you just included a bunch of characters that cost six, you're gonna be in deep, deep duty and you're gonna have to have to buy these guys here. There's actually a way you probably could never field anything if you have just picked way too high costy characters. So you have to kind of understand that you want a variety there, right? Um, so it, it has that aspect to it, which is really nice. So you're always at least able to start fielding and the only the luck comes into like what type of character you get or whether you even roll a character, how much energy you get and what character dice you put in there. Um, I think it works really, really well. Uh, I, I really like the idea of having the nice aspect of like some cards, like let's say Goddess of Thunder, for instance, you can spend one and you'll, you can field her and she's a 2-2. But if you roll a little better, you could spend one and she's a 3-2. 
and that's that's kind of a nice little addition, nice little touch. It's like, oh, this is actually better. But the cost isn't in energy, it's in how well did you roll, or could you re-roll? And the same is said for a lot of these characters. Invisible Woman is either a z is either zero for a one, two, zero for a two, three, or zero for a two, five. They're all zero. In general, most card most card games can't get away with this, but because this involves dice rolling and the ability to kind of mitigate that factor, you have that nice like feeling of I just rolled really well, or I didn't, but I have the ability to try and roll better to get a character out. When I made my deck, for instance, I had Franklin's Galactus, which means it can be either be a three three, a five five, or a ten ten, um, or an eight eight or ten ten. So it can be really really massive. If I roll it and it's terrible, but I have Kang on the field, and whenever Galactus dies, I can re-roll it, and if I roll a character side, I get to put it back, and now it goes from a 3-3 to a 10-10 for free, that is a great feeling, and I love the idea with dice like that. So, overall, the ability to roll the, the dice and have the mitigation and have to choose your own team and make different kinds of combinations of all these different characters is great. The foiling on all the cards is very nice. The artwork on the cards is very nice. This is kind of the typical standard foiling of all of the stuff is on there that is a foil. Um, so it's, it's pretty reminiscent of the original like Ma Magic the Gathering type of foil or Yu-Gi-Oh type of foil um, before they started getting all into the craziness that is those foilings nowadays. And the action cards are pretty simple. The whole gameplay is very smooth. It's very easy to get. Uh, you're only going to have trouble with when you add new characters and you have to understand their abilities and how they function. Understanding that a character is active when the die is on the field zone and not when you have purchased one of the dice. And understand that a character is only field when it basically hits that field zone. It's kind of like an enter play ability. So it's from the reserve, you pay for it, it hits the field, it's fielded. When it's on the field, it's active. And that will basically make up for most of all the actions on your dice. And if you understand that, you're good. Everything on this little sheet here, this tiny little sheet here, which I, I wanna get a mat now, uh, is gonna tell you everything you need to know. And it does a very good job of that. You just have to look at the numbers and move along with the little arrows and you will get it. You'll figure out how the game functions with a super small rule book. In fact, the game comes with in this little Secret Wars uh, origin pack exactly how to play and you don't need any more than that to play. Now, I strongly suggest you check online for a full understanding of different keywords and whatnot because it can get complex as far as that goes, but the basic idea of the game is very simple. It's very easy to get into, and all you need is a little pack here to play just the very basic aspect of the game, and then you throw in one more draft pack, and now you can play the full version of the game. And if you really enjoy the game, that's when you can really get into it and pick up all the different draft packs, pick up all the different singles online, and put together your best possible team. I am a big fan of Dice Masters. I love their original set of games uh, from Quarriers. Uh, and so I, I, I've just always liked the deck, deck building that turned into dice building. And I'm a huge fan of Magic the Gathering. So this all plays in with itself. And it's a really great two player game. I'm curious to see, I'm gonna look to see if there is any other variants of play where I can play up to four players. So I feel like you probably could. Or maybe there's a commander way I could play Dice Masters. I don't know, maybe some of the comments will let me know. But overall, the Secret Wars set is great. All the characters function great. I love all the different Guardian characters. I got Spider-Man, I got Ultimate Spider-Man in here. The bad guys are great. Kang. God Emperor, uh, Doom, uh, Franklin's, I, I played with that team over there, which is all the big, big bad guys, and it felt great playing with them, and the synergies that you can come up with are so interesting and unique. Some cards are more meh, that's just how card games go. Overall though, this is an excellent game, and I understand why it's so popular. Thank you guys for watching with our Unfiltered Gamer board game review for the game Secret Wars Dice Masters. If you're interested in picking this up, you can go down below. There's a link in the description where you can pick up any of the Secret Wars stuff that's new or go back and check out some of the original Dice Masters or do a mix and match. That's all up to you. If you've watched more than one of our videos and you think we've earned it, you can go ahead and give us a subscribe. Hit that subscribe button, the bell notification button. Uh, we do greatly appreciate it. We do try and create videos once a day, Monday through Friday, and have our live streams on Wednesday and Sunday, 6.30 p.m. PST on Whatnot, and then on the other three, YouTube, Twitch, and Facebook. All right, guys, that's all I got for you this time. And as always, I look forward to rolling dice with you next time.